Hello! Welcome to episode 39 of Little Bobbins Knits. My name is Danny, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Little Bobbins. We have a Ravelry group which you can find by searching Little Bobbins Knits in the groups tab on Ravelry, and show notes for the podcast can be found at littlebobbins.co.uk, usually. I didn't manage to get them done last week. I I think I'll just put them up bare bones and not put all the photos in, so I hope that's okay with you. Um, and I'll try and get this week's done as well. Just as I feel like things are calming down and we're getting somewhere, something else is breaks, so. <laughs> but never mind. Anyway, yes, so show notes can usually be found there and I'll try and get some up. So thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate you coming to watch, especially with these just horrendously sporadic podcasts that have been happening over the last little while. I always really, really appreciate you coming to watch. So, um, I had my hair cut. I hate it. I think I was possessed. It was a moment of madness. Um, so if I'm fiddling with it more than usual, I'm sorry about that. It just feels really, really short. So I hope you've had a really lovely time over the last few weeks since the last podcast. Um, it's suddenly got really quite wintry here. It's very misty out and, yeah, chilly. Oh, I can see my jays just popped into the garden. I recorded a little tour of my studio earlier so you'll be able to see the mistiness of outside and yeah a little bit around my space so I hope you enjoy watching that. And a few cameos from Bobbin because he just had to get involved. <laughs> He's sleeping on my lap now. I think it all exhausted him somewhat or exhausted him somewhat. <laughs> right so Today I've got some works in progress to show you, some finished objects, just grab my notes over, and some lovely things. There's a new giveaway which I'm really excited about, and I'll draw for, well I've drawn for the prizes for the purposeful stash along, so I'll let you know who won those prizes. Right, so, works in progress. Now I've got my sort of project in here, this is my lovely bag that Isabel from the Fluffy Fibres podcast made for me and I absolutely love it and I've been taking the project out and about with me so it's been going in this bag but I've got all of my skeins of, well balls of yarn for the project in this lovely big bag from Katie at Knit and Stitch Bits, I just love this, I put a little pom pom on there. But this bag's huge, it fits in, I think there are ten, ten balls of the yarn I'm using. So yeah, the featherweight as I'm sure you know because I think everyone's knitting it at the moment or has just finished knitting it. Um, it's weird how things like that happen isn't it, it just seems like sometimes certain things just are everywhere but yeah so the featherweights by Hannah Fettig and I'm using this Drops Baby Alpaca Silk. Now I've got my camera on a different setting today so I'm not entirely sure how it's going to behave. Now I can tell it, would you zoom please, there you go, but yeah I'm not um trying out a different setting so we'll see how it chooses to behave. I'm sorry Bobbin, am I moving too much for you? I really wanted to knit the featherweight, I think because of seeing so many people knitting it, like Molly from a Homespun House, she was knitting it and well she's knit two now hasn't she? And Kristen from the Yarngasm podcast who Oh, I love the colour that she used, it's just beautiful. So, and I saw this morning, I was watching Jenny from Tiny Paper Foxes, which is just such a lovely podcast. Um, she's just started one as well, so 
yeah they're everywhere and yeah I think it's immersion or something so I just had to cast one on too. I really wanted to use a beautiful independent dyer yarn or something a bit luxurious but I literally can buy no yarn at the moment and I think because I've been organising in here I've been sort of playing with my stash a little bit and I really wanted to use some of it so I happily had 10 balls of this in my stash and thought that I would cast on with that really really conveniently I also already had a swatch <laughs> Sorry Bobbin, I know it's very annoying isn't it? I'd swatched, um, now this isn't the most accurate way to swatch, I, I know that, <laughs> um, because months and months ago I swatched for a jumper, I wanted to knit the Princess Fiona I think it's called, and it's by Jane Richmond, it's a lovely jumper, but I just never got round to it. But I had swatched, and I swatched it using a 3.75mm needle, higher, higher sharps, and it gave me the right gauge for the featherweight. Featherweight's usually knit in a 4mm needle, according to the pattern, but I preferred the fabric that I got with a 3.75. So yeah, I just believed what it said in this swatch. Now I'm using different needles to knit this so <laughs> it's not going to be entirely accurate but it's not a massively fitted cardigan. I don't think the size is as um, what's that word? I don't think the size is as crucial to get really really specific with so hopefully it'll work out fine. <laughs> But we'll see. I quite liked being able to recycle a swatch. I thought that was quite fun. I'm using colour 3250, which I think is light old pink, but I'm not entirely sure. I don't think I've made a project page yet, so I need to do that as well. Oh, and I'm in the middle of a row. This has literally never happened to me the whole time that I've podcasted. I've never been in the middle of a row on something. But today I am. Oh, imagine that. <laughs> so you're not going to be able to see what's going on at all. <laughs> and it's tangled. It's, it's great having two weeks off, or three weeks maybe, you just completely forget how to do everything. Anyway. Ooh. Who knows? What, what can you gather from that? <laughs> it's not it's the start of a cardigan it's not um not very exciting to look at is it and it's awkward i'll get to the end of the row before i show you next time <laughs> i'm using my carbons needles which i really like for these um for this yarn because they've got a bit of grip which i am enjoying because this yarn's quite slippery really so yeah it's just a lot of plain knitting at the moment with increases for the sleeve portion and I'm really looking forward to getting the sleeves on some waist yarn because I think it'll go much quicker then. But yes, that's on the go. I'm keeping my spare yarn in there and then the cardigan in here. I'm showing you all new projects again, aren't I? I think this is the third podcast in a row that I haven't been knitting on the same projects. <laughs> just really, really unfocused at the moment, I think, just because there's so much going on, maybe. Hello. I've got coffee today. It's eggnog coffee, actually. I love eggnog, and you just can't get it here. I remember we had it in Canada when we went to visit my granddad when I was a very small child and it 
the memory has stayed with me. <laughs> so every winter I am first in the queue for eggnog lattes at Starbucks, favourite. Anyway, I'm using a new cup. And this is, um, Mum has been working, I hate that it's not auto-focusing anymore. Mum has been working, um, not working, she's been doing some training courses and it's meant a lot of travel and she's been travelling through King's Cross and this time when she was travelling through she picked me up this mug which I was really really excited about and they said no coffee is so good mmm delicious right my next work in progress is also new it's in my lovely Nottingham Crafts bag that has also been pom-pommed. <laughs> and this is a really... This isn't... It, this project is just not me, really. I don't know what... I don't know what came over me. I was looking through my stash. I can't remember what for now. But I was looking through my stash for something. And I came across the com this combination of yarns and I just had to cast it on. The colour combination isn't really my kind of thing. It's a bit bright for me. Let's see if I can... Are you going to focus on those? You've been very infuriating, camera. So, this one is Cascade Heritage. I can't remember what the colour is called. And this one was a sock blank, which is why it looks all wiggly. I got this sock blank when I was at Festival last year. Uh, Festival is a yarn show in Hitchin. And it's actually happening again hmm, in a couple of weeks' time. So, yes, I'm hope really hoping to go. So do let me know if you're going to, because it would be lovely to say hello. I know that Jane will be there, Gardening Witch, because she's got a stand where she's selling lovely things that she makes, like bags and stitch markers. So it'll be fun to meet Jane again. But yes, so I got this last year from a festival. It was from Truly Hooked, and it's the Dia de los Muertos gradient. And yeah, it was a sock blank. I started knitting it just from the sock blank, but I was really disconcerted by the wiggly stitches in a shawl. They don't bother me at all in a sock. It's fine in a sock for me, but I didn't like it in a shawl. And it's sort of a thinner yarn as well, so it's not looking that neat, which I'm finding a bit disconcerting. But it will be fine when it's blocked, I'm sure of it. So anyway, this is the Clodonia by Kirsten Kapoor and it's a beautiful shawl. I'm sure you've seen it because it's got thousands of projects knit on Ravelry but it's just a striped shawl and then it's got a lovely lacy bit down the bottom that will be in the blue I think. So yeah I'm quite enjoying this actually. It's quite um, mindless because there's an awful lot of plain knitting and a few increases but I'm the thing I'm enjoying most is watching the colours change I think that's quite fun so I'm excited to see what this is going to look like and I'm excited to get to all these different colours especially the purple that'll be good yeah, so that cast on came out of nowhere. <laughs> and I'm quite enjoying it. Oh, that's getting a bit of a tangle. I'm knitting that on 4mm higher, higher sharps. I think, yep. Yeah. Fixed circulars, which I really love. And because you've got... Um, a couple of different types of increase in this shawl it just makes them really really easy because of the lovely 
sharp tips which are my favourite. So yes, let's have another sip of my coffee. I let it go a bit cold really, so. My last work in progress is my blanket. I've been working on my blanket quite a bit. There's a theme, isn't there? It's all very simple, meditative knitting happening at the moment. There's nothing complicated. Just nice, cosy yarns, cosy projects, easy techniques. So I added a few more squares onto my blanket. So I was thinking I was getting quite close to the end of this blanket. I was thinking that I just had to go around the edge, do one more square, all around the edge. Well, not one more square all around the edge, but you know what I mean, just one more row of squares all around the edge, and then I'd be done. But that's not actually true. I have to do another row on the top and the bottom as well, and then go all the way around. So I've actually got 86, about 86 more squares to do before I'm done. I've got an urge to start my next one, and I mustn't, I absolutely mustn't do that until I'm finished this one. But I think I'm going to do slightly smaller squares next time, and that'll be quite fun. So yeah, I added a few more squares. I added this one, that was from Jessie. It's a Madeleine Tosh, I can't remember the colour. It's a Tosh Merino light singles yarn, which is really lovely. And this was also from Jessie. I thought that was quite nice and Christmassy. It's got a real nice feel to it, that yarn. I don't know what it was either, because I didn't, I didn't retain that part, but I've got the label downstairs. Um, I added this one. This one was from Julia, and it's the Skein yarn. Very, very soft and just beautiful to work with. I enjoyed that. This was from Jessie, and that's the Nitpicks Hawthorne which I really liked. That's got some body to it, that yarn. Lovely. Love the colours too. This one's also Nitpicks Hawthorne. That was from Jessie too. Um, I'm not sure which other ones I added. I just sort of dot them in, so I don't always keep track. Oh, I did add this one. That's West Yorkshire Spinners. That's the Wood Pigeon colourway from their Birds uh, series. And that was from some socks that I knit last Christmas, actually. And I added that one. That was from Jessie. That's, that's called something like Sugar Plum Fairy or something. It's really cute. I think that might be all of them. I thought I added more than that, but that might be all of them, actually. I have put a picture of it on Instagram, all laid out on the floor, if you'd like to see it. I want to get another, because I know you can't really see it very well if I hold it up here. The postman's just been, this made Bobbin extremely angry. Look Bobbin, you just need to be quiet. Um, yes, yeah, so if you'd like to see it all laid out, you get a better idea from the picture that I posted on Instagram than if I just hold it up, because I just doesn't show it very well does it? I want to get another picture with Bobbin sat in the middle for sort of scale. I think that would be quite nice. But he's not very good at posing for photos so that may or may not happen. But he's off. The postman made him extremely angry. No Bobbin! Oh dear. He's opened the door, he's gonna go downstairs and have a shout. Hopefully we won't be able to hear him up here. Where are you going? Where are you going? You're a monkey. I might leave this on my lap actually. It's lovely and warm. Let's coax little Bobbin back up here, shall we? After his little tantrum. Come on, Bob. Oh, damn, it's fine. Right, I have got a finished object. Um, and you didn't see me knit this, I just 
ever get possessed by a pattern and you just have to knit it immediately? That's what happened to me. This is the Carousellen pattern from Autumn 2015 Pom Pom Quarterly. It's by Erica Knits. And I have put a pom pom on the top, but it's not secured because this hat's for mum and I'm not sure if she actually wants a pom pom, so it's not completely secured on there, it's just a bit floppy. I love this hat, I think it's so cute. I'm not brilliant at colour work, but I really enjoyed this. Um, I just found it really, I haven't trimmed the ends yet, I just found it really enjoyable to do and quite quick really. Um, I used some stash yarn which was good. It was Drops Nepal I think it was and the pattern calls for a tubular cast on but I didn't do that. I just did a German twisted cast on because I just wasn't in a brain place where I could make the tubular cast on work. I've done it before. I've got no idea what what was going on I just couldn't do it so that was substituted and yeah I put it on it's such a cute hat it's got a bit of slouch which I really like it fits me perfectly actually mum <laughs> but yeah it's got a little pom pom oh, I do love the pom pom hope you can see it. Yeah, anyway, so really really like that hat. I might have to knit myself one. Um, I've got some nice lilac in my stash that I could use as the main colour and some more grey which I could use as the contrast. I think it's going to be so warm. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, because I don't do colour work hardly at all, it was just a nice little burst of colour work really. When I do colour work I hold one yarn in my right hand, which is the hand that I usually carry the yarn when I knit, and one in my left hand. And I use the left hand for the, um, the contrasting colour to sort of even up my tension. It's okay. I'm not that skilled at using my left hand, but it's it's quite nice to have a little play with colour work every so often, I think. So yeah, that's my finished object. Now, upcoming knitting. I know I mentioned in the last episode that Stephen West has got a new mystery knit along. I think it's starting on the 5th maybe, so I yeah, need to get prepared for that. I picked out some yarn and I am so torn with what yarns to use. So I thought I'd show you, see what you think. Now, I'd love to know if any, any of you are doing the mystery knit along. I think it's called the doodler completely unprepared for it really but yeah I picked out a few different colours oh Ben I need my hand oh just getting licked so one of my options is this little combination I think it's recommended in the pattern that one of them is speckly and then the other two are sort of semi-solid so I thought these might be quite nice this is Lene across the universe and I love it, it's so beautiful. It's got all sorts of different coloured speckles in there. And I thought paired with these two, it's quite a sort of vintage, it's got a bit of a vintage vibe to it. These are um, five moons. These are the Luna Plus four ply vintage uh, collection. This is Dirty Rose and this one is Glacial Melt. And they're just 50 gram schemes, but I've got two. So yeah, I was thinking that combination. I quite like that. I like the vintage vibe of it. So I might use that. But I also quite like this. I 
think that's pretty and delicate and sweet. These two are Cascade Heritage. I think this is the butter. I've knit with this yarn before. I knit um, Lena's from A Wee Bit Nitty, her mystery socks. I knit in this colour. And this one, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a lovely sort of lavender sort of colour. And I liked how the lavender is sort of picked up well, and the butter, actually, is sort of picked up in this pistachio scheme from Hedgehog Fibres. Hedgehog Fibres, yeah, that's right. I think I called them Hedgehog Fibre Arts last time. Anyway, there's a bit of my hair. So, yeah, I quite like this combination as well. Move those labels. I think that will be quite interesting. And I haven't knit with Hedgehog yet. A proper project, I haven't knit. So I would quite like to use that one as well. So, what do you think? I might be leaning more towards the vintage sort of look one. I do, every time I see this, I really like that too. I've got them, you would have seen, or you'll see in the studio tour, I've got them in a little basket just up there and I sort of keep having a look at them to see which one I think. I'd like to use the most and just can't decide. But I need to get it all balled up if it starts on the 5th, don't I? So I would love to know which do you think I should use. So yeah, I'm excited to start that. That would be really fun. I've done the last two years of Stephen West Mystery Knit Alongs and I've just enjoyed them so much. They're, um, they really just keep you interested all the time so I hope this one will be just the same. Now I've got some lovely things to show you. A couple of weeks ago um, our football team was playing a football team that's relatively local to us and Andrea I saw your post in the what do you want to see on the podcast thread I'm so sorry it's taken me so long to get back to you but I feel like I may have saved you actually. Andrea asked um, about which football team I support because they show football over in America in the mornings and she thought it might be fun to root for my team. And my team aren't in the Premiership, they're just in the Championship, so I don't know if you'll get their games over there. But they have been playing outstandingly terribly this season, so I do feel like I've saved you from some heartache there because yeah they're just pretending they've got no idea to, how to play football <laughs> but it's Blackburn Rovers just in case um you wondered so Blackburn were playing Milton Keynes um and Milton Keynes is about an hour or so away from here so David wanted to go I couldn't because I had to look after Bobbin mum was away so and he doesn't get left on his own I know someone else asked in the thread why he doesn't get left on his own and yeah, I'll, I'll explain that in another episode. Short answer is because I'm neurotic. <laughs> but yeah, so Bobbin and I were having a look at things that we could do around the um, Milton Keynes football stadium. And I remembered going to this yarn shop in Wuben Sands, it's called the Knitting Hut. It's a tiny little knitting shop and it's very sweet. I really enjoyed going there last time. And yeah, so we drove over with David. David dropped us at this yarn shop and Bobbin and I, very, very luckily, um, arrived on a day they were having a knitting group. So we were able to join in. It was so fun, wasn't it, Bobbin? Bobbin was such a good boy, just sat on my lap sleeping the whole time. Not sleeping the whole time, obviously he had to make sure he knew exactly what was going on everywhere, but yeah, it was really lovely. It was, I thought it was really kind that they let me join in and have little Bobbin there with me. And it's a lovely little shop, they'd just come back from a show, so it wasn't like normal because they were still putting things back and 
stuff. But yeah, it was really lovely and I really hope to go back again soon. It made me... I don't know about you, but I don't have a knitting group around here that I go to regularly or anything. And it really made me remember how inspiring they are. There used to be a wonderful knitting group around here. It's going back about 10 years now, but mum and I used to go every week and it was just so lovely at the best yarn shop um, that's not there anymore, very sadly. But, but I forget how inspiring that is just to be with people who are really passionate about what you do too and I came back from there with patterns that I needed to look up a book that I am on the lookout for I need to find this book and yeah just inspiration it was just really really inspiring so I was so pleased to be able to join in with that we get it sort of from podcasts don't we I know I do when I'm watching podcasts I'm always inspired by what people are doing and looking up things that they're talking about and stuff like that but it's there's quite there is a different thing being in person and yeah I found it very very inspiring so that was at the knitting hut in Wuben Sands and I picked up two balls of this this is the Berger de France Gumi 50, I think. But I just really loved the colour. I love these oatmeal-y sort of sock yarns. I think that they're so lovely. They just... They're cosy colours to me. I don't know why. And sort of Christmassy at the same time, I think. So yeah, there's sort of speckly bits in there. I'm intrigued about how they're going to knit up. The colour is Imprim vague I like that so yeah that was really really fun um my next lovely thing I've had this for a couple of weeks and I just love it I love it I've talked to you about felt fusion before Felt Fusion is on Etsy and Shadow, who is the dyer behind Felt Fusion, quite frequently has uh, yarn club type things where you can um, choose from, uh, oh I'm not explaining this well, you can choose, sometimes you can choose from say four different things and get a yarn that you don't know what it looks like but you know that it will be inspired by one of those four, four things or sometimes she does one where you can send the inspiration and she'll work from your inspiration to create a custom colourway for you for the club and she had one, I can't remember what it was called um, might have been to do with films a couple of months ago and I saw that it was happening about two days before it was going to close, so I was just very, very pleased that I managed to sneak in there. And I sent her some inspiration. Okay, I don't know how best to explain this. Um, so my dog, who very, very sadly died just before Christmas, um, he was just, he was lovely, so, so wonderful. He, I'd had him for over half of my life. He was a huge, huge part of my life and I still miss him horribly. Oh, can't even talk about it. Anyway, um, his name was Brewski and I called him Brewski because at the time I got him, I was obsessed with the film Clueless. And there was a line in there, they're charging for brewskis. I didn't know what brewski meant. I didn't know that it meant beer. It, um, I just thought it was an interesting sounding word <laughs> at the time. So that's how brewski got his name. 
And so when I saw that Shadow was going to be doing a club where you could send in film inspiration for your colourway, I had to do it for special brewski yarn. So I asked Shadow to do two different colourways for me based on the same scene where Christian says they're charging for brewskis. And so she did. And they're just so perfect. I really wanted it to be a sort of kind of tribute to my little brewski. And yeah, she just did so, so brilliantly with the colours. Every time I get um, custom colours from Shadow, I am so thrilled with them. I literally squeal when I open them. They're just so brilliant. Oh, I love them. So this is the first one. And this is so clueless, these colours. Yellow, white, sort of black, and then a turquoise blue and a lovely bright pink. I chose to get two because I wanted to knit socks for mum and for me, but at the moment they're just hanging on my little hooks over there. I can't use them yet. They're, they're really, really special. I'm, yeah, thrilled with them. And then this is the other colourway. And this is much more muted, sort of denim blues, peaches and minty greens. Just beautiful, some greys. And they're both called, they're charging for brewskis because I asked for that to be their name. So they're, they're, they're charging for brewskis one and two. <laughs> and they've got silver Stellina in them as well. So yeah, I love those. And yeah, they're gonna be hung on to for a bit. They're, yeah, very, very, very special. I'm so pleased with them. If you can get into one of, um, I would really recommend Felt Fusion Yarn. I really, really enjoy it. And I always have so much fun when I take part in the custom order ones because it's so exciting giving Shadow your inspiration and seeing how she uses it. I'm just always thrilled with the outcome. It's just brilliant. So yeah, they're my other lovely things. So, I said I was going to start a new giveaway, didn't I? Now, uh, last month I think it was, was my year anniversary for podcasting. And I just think that's so exciting, isn't it, Bobbin? Um, I was so nervous to start this podcast and I still get nervous recording this, especially after I've had a break. I've been really sort of anxiously putting it off thinking, oh no, I, I'm just rubbish, I can't do that. <laughs> the last um, week or so. But apart from the nerves, which are fine, um, podcasting has brought me such a lot. Um, chatting with you has just been so lovely. The people that I've met through this, it's just been such a wonderful experience. I'm really, really pleased that I started it that, that day a year ago when I thought, okay, I'll record this, but I'll put it in the trash bin straight away <laughs> afterwards. I'm really, really pleased I persevered. So thank you for being so welcoming to my podcast and so kind. It's just been a really, really great adventure. But I was thinking about all of the things that have happened in the last year. It's been an intense year, really. I lost my precious dog, as I just mentioned from the yarn. That was big. David and I got engaged, that was big. And we bought our first house. And yeah, whew, that was an experience. So yeah, really intense things have happened this year. Along with the podcast, which has been a huge thing because it's just been 
wonderful. So I wanted to give away a prize to celebrate the year podcasting. And such a lot of things have happened this year. I thought it'd be really fun if you could share with me, if you'd like to win, something that's happened for you this year, something that you've enjoyed or been really excited by. I'd just love to hear, yeah, something that has happened for you this year. I thought that would be a nice thing to hear about. And the prize is this gorgeous bag from Katie at Knit and Stitch Bits. She donated us a few bags and this is one of them. It's just lovely. I love Katie's bags. They're so well made and just pretty, lovely, gorgeous bag. It's got a little box bottom. So yeah, there's that. I just thought this was so pretty. Um, I've popped in one of my little needle cosies that I thought went quite nicely with this. And this gorgeous yarn from Villain Vine Yarns which is so hard to give away. <laughs> it's so gorgeous. I don't know if you can see the sparkle in there. This is her octopus garden colourway. But beautiful. Gold, pinks, greens. Gorgeous. And a little soak sachet. I might put in some tea and stuff like that, which I thought would be fun. So yeah. If you'd like to win this little celebratory giveaway for me, I'm celebrating, yeah, how welcoming you've been to my podcast because I so appreciate you coming to watch. It's just such a, it's just wonderful for me. So yeah, to celebrate that, I'd love to know what's happened for you in the last year. Thank you very much to Katie from Knit and Stitch Bits for donating the lovely bag. And thank you so much to Kristen from Villain Vine Yarns and the Yarngasm podcast for donating the beautiful yarn. I'd like to win that, I think. <laughs> so yeah, I'll pop a thread in the group and if you'd like to enter, it'd be lovely. So, do remember that we've got the Agatha socks giveaway still going. I'll draw for that next week. That's the beautiful sock pattern by Claire of NH Knits. I really like some of the um, entries in that. They've been making me giggle. I have so much in common with so many of you. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway. So, now I will draw for the prizes for the Purposeful Stash Along. And I've put it in a really noisy bag. I don't know why. I did that, but I did, it seems. So, yes, thank you so much to everyone who's taken part in the Purposeful Stash Along. I didn't expect it to go on for so long, um, but thank you for being patient with me and taking part. It was so inspiring seeing the things that you've been making in there. Really, really exciting. So I drew for some prizes from the chat thread um, and the smaller projects and the larger projects. So in the chat thread, I drew for this lovely bag. Oh, this was donated by Tracy at Thimble and Thread Make. And it's just so cute, isn't it? I just love it. So yeah, someone in the chat thread wins that and that went to Miscellany and More and that's Emily in Texas wanted to put in some chat thread prizes because I just appreciate you taking part so much. It's just lovely. So yes, Emily in Texas, miscellany and more. Get in touch with me and give me your address and I will send this lovely bag from Thimble and Thread Make over to you. Uh, Woolly Kim, who is Kim in Rutland, has won a pattern of her choice. So. Get in touch with me, Kim, and let me know what pattern you would like. And I'll get that sent over to you. That pattern with um, prize was very, very kindly donated by a very kind friend of the podcast. So thank you so much for that. 
in the smaller projects oh, I've written this in a really stupid way okay in the smaller project we had the lovely prize from Cowtown Colourworks which was this lovely kit can you see that card there lovely kit of beautiful finger and white yarn and really really cute little birds bag and there are some stitch markers in there too it's hiding somewhere they're definitely in there and the winner of that one is Annie Erdbeer and that is oh yeah you didn't have your name on your Ravelry page uh, but you're in Germany and you knit a beautiful ruffly shawl it was really really lovely so yes you've won that lovely little set so get in touch with me with your address and I'll get that sent out and long tall Katie won the verdure pattern sorry my memory ran out then my camera memory um, so yes Katie knit some lovely stripy socks and Katie's in Texas and yes so get in touch Katie, long tall Katie, and I'll get the um, virtual pattern sent over to you. That was donated by lovely Isabel from Fluffy Fibres Podcast, so thank you Isabel. And the larger projects category, the winner of that one is a lazy beauty and that's Renee she knit a lovely cozy cardi look lovely really really nice and Renee you've won this lovely bag from Sarah over at Naughty Gnome Crafts it's just it's gorgeous and I've also popped in this skein of rainbows and clouds this is from felt fusion it's in their sparkly base I knit with this same yarn it's not gonna focus again and it was the same yarn a little while ago. It's really, really nice. So yes, get in touch with me, Renee. Um, and the winner of the bonbon shawlette pattern, also by Fluffy Fibres, is Julie Patchouli. And she knit a beautiful cabled cardi. That is one that is always on my list. I'd love to knit that. And it looked beautiful on you. So what, um, yeah. Well done Julie, you've won the bonbon Charlotte, and Julie is in Canada. So get in touch with me everyone. If you've got a physical prize then send me your postal address and if you've won a pattern prize just get in touch and I'll get that sent off to you. My battery is about to die so thank you so much for being here with me today. I really really appreciate you coming to watch. Thank you for taking part in the knit along and I hope you'll join in our new giveaway. I'll see you next week. Can you hold me to that, please? Because I've got to get in a better routine. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Hi. So, I thought I'd give you a little tour of my studio. So, I'm just at the door now. And I see that Bobbin has got on my trolley again. He really likes to do that because there are treats up in the little basket. Don't you, Bobbin? Little monkey. I'll give him a treat in a second. Uh, there's my shadow. Um, I've got mini skeins and baskets of yarn on the top here. And there's my blanket, which is so squishy. Uh, I've got fabric in there, bigger bits of fabric. And there's some yarn on here. And this basket here is quite a lot of my works in progress and there's my ironing board and I have uh, fabric bunting up above my ironing board and yes there is a black mark from my iron but we'll ignore that I need to paint over it I like to have fabric bunting up by the iron because I use it to store pins on if I'm taking pins off something that I've made I'll um and ironing it, I'll put the pins on there, which is really handy. And then I've got a little chalkboard and draw thingies. I never know what to call those. I will stick with baskets, maybe. And that's got some papier-mâché bunting that I made on it. They're the yarns for my exploration. No, for
for the new Stephen West mystery knit along that I just can't decide on. There's Bobbin's biscuits. I wonder if I can do this one handed. He'd like me to. Oh, Bobbin. What's this? Ah, little biscuit. Good boy. Um, this is a little mat that I made because this trolley used to be David's granddad's and he used it outside gardening. He'd put his bulbs on it and stuff. So it's seen better days. I cleaned it up and I was planning to paint it but I actually really quite like how the wood shows up in photographs so I think I might keep it. Hello again Bobby. <laughs> I think I might keep it just as wood but I wanted to put this sew a little mat for the top because I thought it would be pretty. You're so good. Under here is my advent calendar and various podcast bits so there is the prize for um, the one year giveaway that I'm going to have for my podcast being around for a year. And that's all the prizes for the Purposeful Stash Along, which is exciting. Oh, Bobby, you're so handsome. Um, I got a little sofa there, which I really like. I, I retreat up to this room so often. It's just so lovely to spend time in. I'm, I really like it. I've got a little shelf up there with some baskets on. That's got all of my nice cards and things that I send. To people, a little basket of hand spun and a Christmassy sheep who stays up all year round. There's some baskets. This um, needs repainting, but this cabinet was actually made in this town, which I thought was quite nice. I found it in a local charity shop. And Bobbin wants to be involved again. <laughs> You're so sweet. Ah, uh, there's my window sill. I've got various candles and. My favourite flower because I've managed not to kill it. Lots of candles and things. And this is the view out of my window. That's our back garden. Needs a lot of work. We're going to get a new fence and things. Um, unfortunately, my little J friend isn't in the garden today. He has been this morning, but we'll come back in a minute and see if he's back for a visit. Uh, this is my main sort of work desk. My little thing there is completely inspired by Molly of a homespun house because she always has it behind her in her podcasts and I just think it looks so cute and so organised as Molly is so I wanted to do the same in my little space and I've got a shelf up there with all of my in progress work in and my sewing machine which I love. My little bucket of Halloween sweets, <laughs> which I kept all to myself. And Mum and I put these shelves up and it was quite an adventure because they're really, really heavy and neither of us are the strongest of people. But we did it, didn't we, Mum? So that was good. And I've got another shelf here with lots of bits on it. That's all needle cosies that I've made that I need to get in the shop. And I've got this table here, which is just my cutting table, which is exciting. I don't know if you saw my studio. I did a little periscope of it in my la in the last house. Um, but it was very, very small. So I just feel so lucky to have all this space now. It's really, really exciting. I've been making Christmas pudding bags. It's got a bit of fluff on it. I made these last year. And they've got little holly leaves on the poles. Very excited about those. Uh, my, what are they called? Rulers. They're under there. They're really handy there. I like that. And there's my spinning wheel. There's some more of my stash. Including two books that I am loving. Sequence Knitting and Loops 10. Brilliant, brilliant books. Highly recommend those. My sock blockers are up there. Oh, I think my Jay's just come back in the garden. Let's go over and see him. He's just on the fence at the moment. Oh, there he is. On the, um, what's it called? Bird table. I wonder if I can zoom in. Oh, 
and there's a little squirrel. Oh, I just love them. They're in the garden every day. And I think they're so fun. I hope my neighbours at the back haven't noticed I'm just recording the house. Sorry about that, neighbours. Um, and this is my uh, sort of fabric organiser thing. Oh, there's the hallway out there. I need to paint that banister. I'm painting it sage green. I'm very excited about it. And we need carpet out there too. Anyway, so yes, here's all my fabric. Um, fat quarter fabric pieces. Uh, I need to iron them and get them all neatly organised. Well, I'm hoping that I'll be able to persuade mum to come and do that because she finds folding and ironing fabric quite therapeutic. So <laughs> I think that, that would be a lovely thing to be able to get her to do if possible. So yeah, really, really lovely space that I feel very, very lucky to have. <laughs> 